Hi guys, Danny here, and welcome to my mod review of the Mad Science mod by Mad Science Mod. Now, I love everything about this mod. The machines, super unique and absolutely fun to play with. The mod author, very helpful. I had a small problem with the mod, I sent them a mail, and they went through all of my mods for me to see where the problem lied, and they fixed it for me, obviously. And third of all, their website. Their website has help for all of the machines, even little information that I found super helpful and, you know, super fun to read as well. So, like I said, everything about this mod is absolutely brilliant. And yeah, so I decided to cover it because I love the mod and I wanted to share it with you guys. So, let's begin. Now, before I start, just a small note. This mod is very endgame. For example, let me see the recipe of one of these machines. As you can see, these uh, transistors here, uh, to make them, you need to get yourself a thermosonic bonder. But for that, you'll need, you know, a block of diamond and another star. So like I said, very end game. Uh, you can see all of the different items and blocks added by the mod here. And there you go, there's the thermosonic bonder. Now, to use it, uh, because the recipes for some of them are not given, uh, I'm just going to go through it now. What you need is a gold nugget and one of these fuse quartz components. And to make them, you just put uh, either, you know, uh, just a fire charge in sand or put another quartz in any sort of furnace. And when you have that, you just put it in like so. And you can see this bar on the side and that's full. Basically, you need to give it a redstone signal and that's what it has. And you can see that it's, you know, it's going. You can see by this little bar here, it'll take its time. But when it's done, it'll create one of, uh, let's see, these guys, the silicon wafer component. And with the silicon wafer component, you put it in again with a gold nugget, and you get yourself one of these transistor components. Just thought I'd go through that because the recipes isn't in the NEI. So yeah, that is the thermosonic bonder. Now, because this is a mod dealing with um, genetic manipulation, the first thing you need to do is get yourself some DNA. To get that, you need some empty syringes. And basically, all you need to do is left click, or basically attack the different mobs with the syringe in your hand. So, just like that, I got myself a human DNA syringe. Alternatively, you can also shift, right click, and as you see, I got damaged, but I also got myself some human DNA syringe. Notice the green bar under there? That's basically how long I can keep the, you know, the DNA in the syringe before it spoils. And I'm going to, you know, let it spoil to see. Oh, the wolf got out. Okay, let me not attack that. Actually, I'll attack that. Just getting myself some wolf DNA. There you go. And I have the wolf DNA is just there. So, oh, all the wolves are really angry at me. Okay, I'm going to go into creative mode now. And check back on the syringes that I have here. And as you can see, the syringes I had uh, with the villager DNA have gone bad. Now it just says dirty syringe. Now to prevent that, what you need to do is put it inside one of these guys. The cryogenic freezer. Basically, you need some sort of freezing material. Ice, no, something like that. Put it in. And if you guys haven't noticed it by now, I actually have a creative energy cell from thermal expansion powering all these machines. Um, but, you know, you can have any sort of uh, a battery or whatever that's supplying the energy. And I put the ice there and you can see the ice is slowly being used up. And basically I'm going to put the syringes inside. Now what the freezer does is that it stops the syringes and the DNA from you know going bad from being spoilt and it also repairs it so now I'm completely out of human DNA so let me just whack one of these guys and put this inside of the freezer there you go now this won't go bad if I spread this around a bit you can probably see that it heals the DNA as it repairs it it's really, you know, deep green now. It should get lighter. 
But next what we do is go here inside of the DNA extractor and we just put in the DNA that we want to extract. Uh, don't mind this at the moment. So whack one of you guys and throw that in there. And we can see that the DNA is slowly being taken out of this arrange and extracted. And there you go. Now the deal with these guys is that they also spoil. If I was in survival, like now, you can see the green bar comes up again. To stop that, you can put it inside of the freezer again. Or, you know, just do things really quickly. <laughs> you always have that alternative. And if you look at the freezer now, the human DNA sample that was, you know, lightly damaged is now completely healed. It doesn't even have a damage bar anymore. So, like I was saying, the cryogenic freezer can actually repair the DNA. Oh, look, I think this human DNA was damaged. If it wasn't, uh, well, it is, you know, not damaged now. And all of these wolf DNA are also less damaged. The color change in the damage bar. So, let's see, I have some wolf DNA and I have some human DNA. So, what I'm going to do is take the human DNA and oh wait i already did that didn't i i already got the human dna sample so i'm gonna take the wolf dna put it inside of the machine like so and it's going to take out the wolf dna now we also have the syringe sanitizer the syringe sanitizer as its name suggests cleans syringes you just put the syringe in there supply it with water which i'm using uh this machine for the aqueous accumulator and some liquidux so the water is flowing here and there you go now the syringe is clean and if I wanted I could get another sample like that boom and let's see this should be done I take the wolf DNA let me just put the human DNA in there just so I can get a another sample put the dirty syringe inside of the syringe sanitizer you can see the progress bar and then it gets cleaned it's very simple there you go now this bar is this uh, sample is damaged I go in the freezer put it in and it'll repair it for me now say you have all the samples that you wanted say you have the samples of all the animals of the mutant creature you wanted to create Next we go to the genome sequencer. Basically, you take a sample DNA and put it in there along with one of these data reels. Put it in there like so and it will record the DNA sample inside of the data reel. You can see the progress bar, it will do its thing and there you go it's recorded. Now you can see in the little progress bar there uh, that it's not you know completely done. To get it to be you know complete we need to add more so let me find the villager one so which would be the human DNA we just put that in there and we can see the progress bar going and eventually it'll take its time until the whole thing is completely you know full and the genome sequence is completely written in the data reel and as you see there it's 63 now and when the progress bar is done it will be 62 and after a while the information will be recorded in the data reel now this might take you know a long time and a lot of samples and for that reason you need to keep some villagers alive as you see when I'm you know left clicking it's obviously doing some damage so, you know, try to heal them in some way. And with the syringes, I can just put it back here. Take the sample out. Whoops, not that. And put it in there. And I can just put the... Whoops, where it is. The dirty syringe back inside there. I think I accidentally pricked myself again. Yeah, be careful of that. Shift, uh, shift left clicking. Shift right clicking, sorry, will damage you. So let's see. On its progress, yeah, it's just started to fill up. You can see the little red dot there. So we know it started. It'll take its time and a lot of power. Oh, look, it's 
gotten slightly bigger now, which is good. So when that gets complete, as in when the whole genome is completely written inside of the data reel, we go in the computer mainframe. Now the mainframe can be used to combine the two data reels that contain, you know, the genome of two different creatures into one new mutant creature. Like before, this bar on the side is the redstone. This will decrease if I let it go. Okay, it's not. Thank you for proving me wrong. <laughs> but if I flick this, you can see it's off. And when I flick it again, it's on. This is the idle state. And if it didn't have wa enough water, it would show the, you know, it doesn't have water kind of state. Which would be like a fiery thing. And uh, what, what else? Well, if I get this to work, you'll see it's a working phase. Working state. So let's see if I put that there. There you go. It's working now. And what I'm using is a wolf and a villager, which would be a human. And an empty data reel there. So what we'll do is take the two DNAs, the two G genome from those two uh, different creatures, and combine them into a new and different creature. So like before, this will take some time. This will also take a lot of water, and I mean a lot of water. I was just using buckets before, and I used up 64 buckets and didn't even go halfway. So like I said, a lot of water. But when that finishes, you will get your data reel. And if I check back on the genome sequencer, you can see that it's around a third way done. And it's used up around 9 samples. So yeah, that takes some time. And in the freezer, we can see that the DNA are actually, you know, uh, they're not as bad anymore. The, the damage bar is nearly completely full. The sanitizer. Oops, the wrong place. You had to put it there. These two slots are for the buckets. So if you wanted to put buckets of water, you just put it up there. And, you know, after the bucket's done, it goes in the other slot. And if we go here, we can see that it's done. There you go. This is the data reel for the example mob. The example mob would be a com combination of a wolf and a human. And I'll show you guys what it looks like in a second. Alternatively, I could also have put in a pig and a zombie to get a pig zombie. What I mean is, let's see if I have it in this box. No, I don't. Uh, chicken, pig, and a zombie, which should be green. No? Zombie. So take the wolf out, take the villager out, put in the pig, put in the zombie, get one of these guys, put it in there like so. There you go. You could hear the beep. And it should be working. And it is. So when this combines, what you'll get is, well you can pretty much guess what happens when you mix a pig with a zombie. You get a zombie pigman. And next we have the genome incubator. Now with this machine, you can incubate different creatures. For example, you don't even have to incubate the mutants, you can just incubate a normal creature. For example, if I put the villager one there, and take just a single egg, I'll take a whole bunch in fact, and throw that in there, it takes its time, but what it gives me is a spawn egg. So yeah, it's super handy that way. So, in fact, I can make as many mob eggs as I want. So, this bar completes, and I'll get myself a villager spawn egg. But I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is put in... Where is it? The example mob. This should take its time, but while that's doing, I'll cover the other things. So let's see, the computer mainframe, it's still doing its thing. The data reel is still empty. And the zombie and the pig have not combined yet. The genome sequencer is just halfway done, completing that. And it's used up more than half of it, the sample DNA. If we go into the freezer, we can see that it's completely healed. So like I said, you can use the freezer to repair or stop from spoiling all of the different samples that you have. But keep in mind the amount of items you're using to cool the freezer with over here. It went from 64 and now it's 58. So yeah, 
doesn't use a lot, but it still uses quite a bit. And there you go, the genome incubator is finally done. And it gave me a spawn example mob, egg. <laughs> it basically used up the egg, but it still has the data reel. The data reel is not going to be used up, so it can be used as many times as possible. So when I right click, I can spawn the mob. Now I don't know if it's going to be hostile or not, so I'll just spawn it in here. There you go, the example mob. I combined those two animals, basically the wolf and the villager, and I got myself a wolf man. I don't think he's aggressive, I think he's passive as well. So that's awesome. Let's see if I can interact with him. I can't, which is sad. Anyways, <laughs> um, let's see if this is done. Where is it? And it is, there you go, pig zombie. But it's not really a pig zombie, it's a zombie pigman. I'll just put that there, put that there. And we can see that this is going to start. We can see the progress is going. So next we have the Disgusting Meat Cube, which is my favorite item in this mod. Basically what this item does is gives me random pieces of meat. And if we give it a second, we can actually see that the meat... Okay, I can't, you know, get the items from it anymore. It's completely empty. But if we give it a second, we can see that it goes up. Give it a second, give it a second, there you go. Basically what I have in there is the bucket of liquid mutant DNA, let me just get one there, like so, you can see it being filled up, and it uses up the liquid mutant DNA to build itself up, and then if I right click, left click, I can get the meat. And these are all, you know, completely eatable, normal meat. As you see there, raw pork chop, raw chicken, raw beef. And if I left click, we can pull out more meat. And it's just slowly using up the liquid mutant DNA. Now, to make the disgusting meat cube, what you need to do is in the computer mainframe, combine the, you know, the slime data reel and the data reel to any of the three animals that make meat. Basically, uh, the pig, the cow, or the chicken. So, if I take, no, I'll keep the pig. Take out the zombie. Get the slime. Where is it? There you go. Put those two in there. Get an empty one. Put that in there as well. And we heard it beep, and this basically fills up to give us the disgusting meat cubes one. And what you do after getting it, Basically, after you get the... Oh, look! The zombie pigman spawn egg is here. So, now that that's finished, I can spawn that. There you go. That's what you get when you mix the zombie and the pig. Now, if you read the mod carefully, it says there are some mutant creatures from the start. And there are some mutant creatures that you can create. The mutant creatures that you can create, for example, would be the example mob, uh, the wolfman. And the pre-existing one will be the zombie pigman. Now, for example, if I take the empty syringe and right-click on the zombie pigman, get back here, you. Whoops. Oh no, I nearly got killed. Is the syringe of mutant DNA. Now I should get that if I right-click the wolfman as well. Come on. There you go. Mutant DNA. And what I can do with that is basically go over here to the DNA extractor and put it in like so. And basically the DNA uh, is used up and added to this bar here. And you can take the mutant DNA out from the tank using buckets and you'll get one of these liquid mutant DNA buckets. And then you can go over here to the disgusting meat cube and add it there. To grow it again just like that basically like i was saying where is it the pig and the slime you can also use chicken or cow to give you the disgusting meat cubes one and you can put it in the genome incubator with the spawn egg and get yourself a disgusting meat cube so yeah it's like 
left click, left click, left click. It actually makes the sounds of the different animals, which is sort of creepy. That cow sounds like it's in pain. The description said that it's a a, a byproduct of a DNA experimentation. Basically, it's a creature that's barely alive, and its function is nothing than to give us meat, which is sort of sad. But free food is free food, and I don't really care. I'll mute the sound if I have to. <laughs> Uh, it's nearly empty, so let me get a bit of that. Throw that in there. Boom. And all I have to do is go over. Is whack these guys. Like so. To get myself the mutant DNA. I don't even have to combine it, I can just get the zombie pigman. But you know, the zombie pigman is obviously hostile when you hit it. So be careful of that. Is this nearly done? It's done. The disgusting meat cube. So I just put that in there. With this. And the progress bar should be increasing. And it is. And then I can make myself one of these guys. And next we have the cryogenic tube. The cryogenic tube is the item that you can use to create energy. Now... <laughs> Now these machines, you know, they're obviously to do with DNA manipulation and mad scientist and all that. After all, the mod is called mad science. So some of these things might, might seem a bit unethical to, you know, completely horrible like this cryogenic tube. Basically, the cryogenic tube uses the thoughts, the brain function and the body heat of villagers to create power. Yep. And you can see its max power is 100 MJs per tick. And how this works is basically you put in the spawn eggs for the different villagers and then it produces the power. Note that you do have to put in a nether star. It won't use up the nether star and the machine itself, the cryogenic tube, doesn't require a power source. It, do it does give out power off after all. But you still need to put in the nether star. And the memory data. How to get the memory data as you see, the machine isn't working now. That's that sign there. You need to put in just an empty data reel. And as you see, when I put in the empty data reel, it went from the skull and crossbones to the flashing one. Basically, after you put in the empty data reel there, you get yourself a memory data reel. And you can put it back in there to produce more power. Now, Depending on the kind of memory data reel that you get, it could be priest, it could be butcher, farmer, and so on. Depending on which one you have, produces different amount of power. Something just dinged, what dinged? There you go. Disgusting spawn egg. Whoops, sorry. Disgusting meat cube. Plenty of meat for everybody. Completely unethical. Horrifies me. But free meat. And like I was saying, depending on the kind of memory data reel you have, you could have any of the, any of the, what is it, six, one, two, three, four, five, five. Uh, you produce different amount of uh, power. Let me put in an empty one. Now, you won't know which one produces how much power until you try them all out. I'm not going to give that away either. But I will say that there is one that produces uh, a higher power than the rest of them. And as you can see, you also create rotten flesh because basically what you're doing is you're using the spawn eggs to create the villagers and the villagers are inside of the cryogenic tube and their body heat and their, you know, uh, brain waves are used to produce power until they're dead and then a new one is spawned. Theoretically, this sounds horrible. If this was happening in real life, you would probably vomit. But in this mod, it's awesome. <laughs> so there you go. Now this em this data reel is still empty, and I haven't gotten any rotten flesh, meaning that one villager is still alive. Uh, the heart is decreasing; it's nearly dead. Come on, let's see. Let's see if I get a em let's see if I get a memory one with this. Do I? Come on. There you go. 
And this one is a priest. Did I get a priest one before as well? I did. Well, you know, you have to go through all of them and all of them produce different amounts. And I got a weapon flesh as well. So, there you go. Those are all of the different machines in this mod. Brilliant mod, like I said. And that is it for this mod review of Mad Science. Uh, like I said, brilliant mod. Um, if you liked the video, please leave a like or subscribe for more Minecraft videos. Thanks for watching.